everyone, Dr. Evan here. Um, today we're going to do a video on something that is extremely common and is on almost every brain MRI uh, that is read by a radiologist. Um, there are things on there that go, go by many different names, but they're all kind of talking about the same thing, and you've probably seen this if you've had a brain MRI. Uh, you'll see the phrase T2 flare hyperintensity, T2 flare hyperintense white matter disease, uh, chronic white matter disease, chronic microvascular, ischemic white matter disease, all these things are sort of talking about the same thing. And uh, I'm gonna go in detail about what these are, what they look like, uh, and why they're important and why the radiologist always mentions them. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, please uh, give it a like, and you can also subscribe to our channel. As always, you can comment below, uh, and we're happy to answer any questions you have, as well as try to make videos of anything that you would like us to make, uh, or any suggestions, uh, we're happy to do that as well. Okay, so let's talk about chronic microvascular white matter changes, or sometimes uh, these are called nonspecific T2 flare hyperintensities within the white matter, uh, or even sometimes just small vessel disease uh, within the brain. If you're watching this video, you probably have noticed that these findings are noted in most brain MRIs. And the reason for that is that they are a very common finding that is related to many things that affect our brain, including just normal aging. So let's go through what they mean and what they look like. So this is a brain MRI on the left side of the screen, and this is an artistic drawing of the brain. So this is a flare sequence. This sequence of the brain basically makes all the fluid dark and it allows us to see any abnormalities in the white matter. So I'm gonna use this over here to, to show what the difference is between the gray and the white matter. So you can see here in the dark orange, this is the gray matter. Um, and then on this MRI, it's actually this lighter color here. You can see it around the, these are called gyri, and then these spaces of fluid here are called sulci. You can see the gray matter lining the outer portions of the gyri. And then this lighter orange color, or on the flare sequence, this darker gray color, that is the white matter. The gray matter is where there are cell bodies, and the white matter is where there are um, the wires that connect the cells together, which are called axons. One way I can show this is, this is an example of what a cell body uh, would look like. This is called a neuron. And then the axons would be these wires here and then they connect to other cells in other places of the brain. These white things here, this is myelin. It's basically fat that coats the axons and provides insulation for the electrical conduction through the brain when we move or think or anything like that. So the cells in the gray matter are gonna send axons down into the middle part of the brain here where there are more cell bodies. These are the deep gray nuclei or the basal ganglia. And then they're gonna send more white matter down into the brainstem to even more gray matter and then down into the body. So that's how those connections work. As far as the white matter itself, it should look like this drawing. It should be the same color. There should be nothing inside of it. Um, you can see here on the flare sequence, we can see that dark gray color. There's nothing uh, within there anywhere, and you can see the white matter throughout the brain here. We don't see any abnormalities in the white matter. Okay, so now I have another brain MRI over here, and I'm gonna use this to compare to the normal one. And you'll see here, within the white matter of this brain, there are a few white spots. You can see one there, one there, one there. And these are spots in the white matter uh, where those wires or axons have been damaged and they show up on the flare sequence uh, in white. And you can see we don't see that on the normal. So these are those nonspecific T2 flare hyperintensities that they're talking about. So anything bright on flare, uh, T2 is another sequence you can see here. And uh, they show up bright on that sequence as well. Um, so that's why that term exists and hyper intense means bright as compared to the rest of the brain tissue. So T2 flare hyper intensities, that's what these are. 
and the reason why they're called non-specific is because many different things can cause damage to those wires or axons as I mentioned before. Most radiologists will tell you that we collect about one of these per decade of life. So if you're in your 40s, you're allowed to have uh, basically four or five of these, and that's considered normal aging. Uh, once you get more than that, many different things can cause these. The most common cause is what is called chronic microvascular ischemic disease or small vessel disease. Basically what that means is the entire brain parenchyma has tiny vessels that go inside of it. And as we age or have head trauma or ingest various different things uh, throughout our life or even from infections or diseases that we've had, those little vessels can be damaged. Most commonly they're damaged by high cholesterol or high blood pressure as in other parts of the body. And when those little vessels are damaged, they can cause damage to the myelin and that will cause these little spots here. Basically, these are little tiny spots of scarring uh, that have occurred because of that. So that's why they're called uh, microvascular disease because of the small vessels, micro meaning small. And they're called chronic because they happen slowly over time and you then have them basically the rest of your life. So this person here has several small ones. These are likely clinically insignificant. There are not very many of them. Um, and these uh, are probably due to uh, chronic microvascular disease, as I mentioned. Uh, other things that can cause this, uh, migraine headaches can actually produce these, mostly in the frontal lobes and in what we call the subcortical white matter, which is right underneath the gyri. Uh, demyelinating diseases such as multiple sclerosis can cause these, but in that particular case, they tend to be uh, more round, greater than three millimeters, and they tend to be adjacent to this structure here in the midline, which is called the corpus callosum. So I can show you that here. This is the corpus callosum. Lesions and multiple sclerosis tend to be in a longitudinal axis adjacent to this corpus callosum like this uh, in a pericolosal distribution and uh, the chronic microvascular changes tend to be in a distribution like this subcortical and periventricular near the ventricles these are the lateral ventricles so those are the most common causes of these non-specific white matter changes there are uh, other causes such as prior infections, um, inflammatory diseases or autoimmune diseases. Uh, they're basically anything that can cause scarring to the uh, myelin or the axons. But far and away, the most common cause is chronic microvascular disease, which is why it is basically named in uh, every brain MRI report that has these findings. I can also show a more severe example of these findings. So you can see here in this person's brain, this again is a flare sequence, and we can see that this person has basically confluent uh, or patchy areas of this T2 flare white matter hyperintensity. And you can see again, it's in the subcortical white matter underneath the gyri and then mostly periventricular along these lateral ventricles here which is very typical of chronic microvascular white matter disease, as I previously mentioned. This person would be classified as having moderate uh, or moderate to severe disease, um, given the confluent nature, and this would be considered atypical or pathologic. So unlike the other case where there were a few dots that would be maybe considered normal for age, this amount of change would uh, never be considered normal. And in this particular case, the patient may actually have symptoms related to this, uh, ranging from confusion or altered mental status or even dementia. Uh, some people may be asymptomatic with this, but this appearance can lead to uh, vascular dementia uh, if it is severe enough and is most likely caused by hypertension uh, or high cholesterol. 
There are, again, demyelinating diseases or what are called dysmyelinating diseases or leukodystrophies that can also look like this, um, but they are exceedingly rare and uh, by far, again, the most common cause of this is chronic microvascular ischemic white matter change or damage due to long-standing high blood pressure or high cholesterol. So I hope this video was helpful in explaining to you uh, what chronic microvascular ischemic white matter disease is uh, or the nebulous term of nonspecific T2 flare hyperintensities. I know those findings show up on most brain MRIs and I hope you now have a greater understanding of what that means. If you do happen to have these findings, um, you can discuss them with your primary care physician or your neurologist and see if they think that um, they're related to any of the symptoms you may be having.